Cheers, buddy. Um, it's nice to see you in person instead of on television. Well, you know, we, <laughs> I, I, I would see you more often if you hadn't moved out to BC. Don't get me started on this because one of your team members was just asking me about it and asked me if I miss Montreal. And I have to... And you got choked up, didn't you? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, because it's... Well, you know this because you travel the country so much. Yeah. Right? The, the regions, it's a big place, a big it's, country. It's the regions country. are really, really There's different. Lots of beautiful places. Yeah. But Montreal is home. Yeah. And you know what I think what happened is I was looking through this through holiday eyes. You know when you come out here and you're snowboarding or you're surfing or you're skiing with family, whatever it is, you see it through a different set of mm -hmm. eyes. And then when you're somewhere on a daily basis, it's, it's a lot different. I would imagine, like, say, being in Parliament. <laughs> it looks fun from the outside. <laughs> oh, does it look fun from the outside? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> looks a little fun. I, um, I want to start uh, by asking you uh, about when you look back on the year, hmm. where's, where's your head at? Because I have to tell you, as, as your friend, as your longtime friend, because every time we have this conversation, I have to tell people um, it's not a political conversation. We're not going to talk about policy. It's two old friends sitting down having their pre-Christmas beer. And now we can have a beer because it used to be with 7 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But I, I, I think the last time I saw you, we had a hamburger together, and I said... Listen to your security team. Don't, don't challenge them. Because it, it's, it's getting crazy in the world. And, I, and I, wonder, I wonder where your head is at and how you think about that and how you approach that. I, I, Do you I, hear any of it? Uh, you know, when you, when you start it and you say, oh, you look back over the year, like I have been. I mean, it's the end of this year. We're one year into, into this mandate, right? Yeah. And... Like, I was reminding myself everything that happened this year, right? Yeah. First of all, a year ago this year, we were just heading into the Omicron lockdowns for Christmas, yeah. right? It was still still full-on pandemic. It was, it was that, yeah. that horror movie, Last Gasp, when you think yeah, everything's yeah. done in the end, you got the jump scare at the end. Yeah. Well, that was the Omicron thing that we were dealing with. And, and then Russia invaded Ukraine. And there were convoys. And then the Emergencies Act. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, what else? Queen died. Um, the the uh, well, any number of things happened. This yeah. year. I mean, I'm 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 forgetting some too because uh, we had a really intense summer. We had uh, the inflation crisis. People people struggling with that. Like there's there's all these different challenges going on throughout this year. It's just been a really really busy time, but it's one of those things where. When you're doing this job, you're doing it with the only way to do it is to have a total focus on Canadians, like on the people you're doing it for and with and in service of. Because it, if you don't, it makes no sense. Right? I mean, there's so much going on that if you're not staying grounded in what this means, for people, and that's why the pandemic was so hard that it disconnected us. We were all watching each other through Zoom. This year has been about getting back out and connecting with people in a very real way. Um, that that has invigorated the wrong wrong word, but has grounded me once again in what this job is all about. And, and why the things we do matter so much. So I'm, I'm, you know, you mentioned the crisis. So I'm, I'm watching, like all Canadians, I'm watching on TV. And again, I don't want to talk about, you know, policy decisions, anything like that. I'm curious about you as a person. Like, you know, we all have a shitty day at the office, right? You come home and your wife says, how was your day? <laughs> You know, and, and a lot of people bring pressures home from work and whatever. I want to know, what, where are you? Like, are you, 
in the office and are people standing around you giving you con constant information like how how do you cope during those two or three weeks how it's a 24 7 gig how do you cope with a crisis of that nature as a person but 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 during those two or three weeks yes the convoy was going on outside parliament's windows but i was busy governing Canada, right. right? I mean, like, like there's still, you know, a threat of a rail strike in this town. There's still uh, legislation that has to pass independently of that. There's still uh, international summits and events that I have to attend virtually in this case. There's still, um, you know, policy objectives we're having to fulfill on health care, on things. So, yes, uh, the... the Convoy was a, a piece of all, like every day I'd get briefings and updates on what the police was doing or wasn't doing. Um, but we, we ended up you doing that while you're doing all the regular things of government. So I didn't get on a personal level, I mean, even as, as we were regularly briefed on the disruptions to Ottawa and the disruptions at the border crossings, on the threats of more coming in, and all this thing. That was one thing we were dealing with. So that's just one file you on your deal desk. With, it was a big one, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it, yeah. it got to be pretty all-encompassing, um, particularly that last weekend yeah. where we were, we were doing meetings almost every day, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, that we invoked the act, um, and that was, that was all intense. But... Throughout the weeks running up to it, as I was, you know, going through, going through for for the uh, for for the appearance at the committee, um, I was going through my schedule and oh yeah no there's a there's a call with an indigenous leader on this there's a, oh I'm talking to the Belgian prime minister oh I'm I'm doing like I mean there's all sorts of other things going on in my day that in hindsight oh my god it was just all convoy all the time so you it just stay focused wasn't. you just stay focused on on the job at hand you stay focused on what it is you're looking at at this particular moment so in that in that week tell me a typical day you get up at what time and are you at home and then you go to the office yeah yeah uh, you know, listen it, so it, the job the job just kept going the, on the job keeps going yeah uh, and it, it, and it, as it should uh, like we have uh, like one of the things that I think, you know, the, the, the Public Emergency uh, Commission highlighted for people was just all the steps involved in everything in government. Like, I, I get, while I'm busy dealing with some um, challenge that, you know, farmers are struggling with and I'm digging into this file for an hour as we're trying to look at ways to support people because, you know, fertilizer challenges or whatever it is going on. Um, the next meeting, I'm getting caught up from uh, one of my intelligence specialists who's talking about the work that they've been singularly focused on for the past three days to give me an update on that. And I get that information. And then I move on uh, to dealing with a, an East Coast fishery issue that, that, that we're talking about and everything. So, so my job is to, is to look at all these different things happening at the same time while I have a minister of this thing who's digging into that and a minister of that thing who's digging into this and experts who are looking at this. And, you know, my office and the team that I work with are trying to make sure it all sort of holds together because you don't get to stop doing everything else even if you're dealing with an emergency over here. And, and yes, you get more focus on certain things from one moment to the next but the job continues because I, I get the impression that a lot of canadians think you're like king that you know that everything you you just do everything and that you know that that you make all of these you know what i'm saying that that people view the job from the outside as oh what a cushy job he's got all of these you know, people around him helping him and he gets driven everywhere and he's got his own plane and, you know, and I, as your pal, I get mad, right? <laughs> I, I, I get very defensive and I get pissed because I know there's, there's more to it than that. That's of not, course. A, it's not the way our system works and, and B, there's, there's a human being inside that person behind the desk. But the, the job of the PM 
is, is to pull it all together, is to make sure you've got great people on all the different files, to keep an eye on most of them, yeah. try to be all of them, but you lean into a few areas that need more focus by you uh, and, and those things that, that we choose to drive, um, you pick and different, different PMs will pick different priorities. But that, that, that idea of the combination between having, having the big picture because ultimately every minister is focused on their own files right. and whatever she's yeah, engaged in mostly, she'll be, it becomes the most important thing or he... Um, and I'm the one who's got to see what they're all sort of doing and, and pull it all together. And again, I, I don't do it alone. I have no. a, a good team of... But the, the buck stops around. at your desk, yeah, right? Yeah, very much. Somebody's got to make the decision, and yep. that's you. And, and the, way, the way to bring that, the right big picture from, from my desk is to make sure I have as good or a better idea of the big picture in what the individuals across Canada are facing than anyone else. Because you can you know, get narrowly viewed into your issues in your department, and if you don't have a sense of where Canadians mostly are, uh, and, and, and that's, again, why the pandemic was so difficult. Because yeah. through yeah. Zoom, you have great meetings, yeah. but you don't have the chit-chat on the way into the meeting. Yeah. You don't have that you know, hanging around, you know, the, yes. the, 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 the coffee counter yeah. or the cookies while you're while you're yeah. taking a five minute break to chat on how things are going. So it's all a lot of really intense conversations, but none of the peripheral stuff that builds a relationship, right? Right. That actually means, okay, this is this is how you're really doing, and you know, you know, you know. that that dynamic was what we were able to get back into this year. I and, think and we get. Do you think we've moved past that? Do you think we're gonna? Past what? Well, have we moved past the 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 pandemic? You know the way the way people. Um, it's changed the way people behave. It has changed the way people. Yeah. I was talking to a, a friend of mine who's a cardiologist in Montreal and he teaches at the uh, McGill uh, uh, McGill uh, Health Center, and um, he was saying that students who you know started med school during the pandemic yeah. spent so much time focused on a screen. That even now that they're back in person, it's not their natural inclination to engage yeah. with each other, right. let alone have a real back and forth with with the teacher. So there's all sorts of things we have to relearn. I think we've developed a capacity to have meetings through Zoom and at distance that is going to be beneficial to us. Yeah. I mean, we can now do virtual mm -hmm. things that don't require us to <coughs> well, uh, to actually physically travel around the world or across the country or even across the uh, across town. But I think we also learned the limitations of that, that you yeah. can do, you know, one meeting or a quick meeting like that, or send an email if you don't need a phone call and do a phone call if you don't need a Zoom and do a Zoom if you don't need to see someone in person. But you do need to see people. In yeah, you you do. do need that contact. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be 100% the same way. And I think that's that's the balance that we're, we're trying to look at. But for me... Um, in this job, is that, that contact with people that is the most important thing. Do you hear the criticism? Do you read anything? Do of you course. see anything? You do. Oh, yeah. No, because, because in every... Just because someone hates you doesn't mean they don't have a point, right? Yeah. And, and you, you have to learn right. how, to, how to distinguish that. So, right. so even in the most critical things, uh, you know, there's usually a bit of nonsense in there, but sometimes there's a kernel of truth that makes me reflect on, okay, yeah, maybe yeah. I should do this differently or do that differently. And that, there's, uh, yeah, it's tough to get to the point where you can, you can see through vitriol to sort of say, okay, um, what's their core point or what is the issue that I really do need to reflect on? Not that, uh, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, that I'm what they say they are, uh, I am, but is it is is there something that I can do to, to sort of find a middle ground? Because the, the the culture, in in my opinion, the culture has, I mean, it, it's gone nuts. I mean, the there people now behave in ways that I never thought I would see people behave, and I'm wondering how. Is there a way to to teach people? You know, like. You and Mr. Ford can sit across the table from each other. You and Mr. Eby can sit across the table from each other. Me and Mr. Kenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're not yeah, politically yeah, aligned. No. But no, you, no. Don't, you don't sit there and, and, and scream and yell at each other. 
And, and you're certainly not going to agree on everything. And this is the kinds of conversations, you know, I've tried to have with people, you know, who know that, that you and I are, you know, are friends. And I often, you know, there's often after a few drinks at a party, somebody will say to me, hey, I want to talk to you about your pal. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and the you know, I get that about you from time to time. <laughs> The kind of thing that, you know, the kinds of things, and as you, the word you use was vitriol, is, to me, it's eye-popping. It's, it's, but it's I, see, don't, I don't know how we, we change that. First of all, first of all, you, at one point, you can't take it personal, right? So you because, don't. Because, well, I mean, sometimes you do, yeah, I'm yeah. human. Um, but, like, I'm, 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 you know, the person everyone can point to, right? Yeah. It's like, I, I you know, I'm... In the, in the position of being the other one at the top of the pyramid in the in the, in the country, right? I'm the prime minister, so so yeah. But now they're throwing it's rocks. Thing. You know what I mean? That's uh, that's a big change in this listen, country. Do you, do oh. I was thinking back. Um, do you remember my campaign office opening back in Montreal I do. on Saint Denis Street in two thousand eight? There were about 150 people out front um, protesting massively yeah. against me, yeah. right? We're Canadians. Yeah. We have a, a range of opinions. People are always going to come out yeah. and, and, and grumble and shout and disagree because, and especially if you're trying to do anything of consequence in yeah. this country, yeah. by definition, it's making a change that's going to, you know, ruffle some feathers and make other people pleased, right? I mean, it's y y if you're doing meaningful things, um, there's going to be a range of opinions on it, and some people will be motivated to come out and, 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 and let you know. I guess one of the things that's different now comes down to the capacity for amplification and echo chambers, right? Right. Uh, that... that you know, what, what worried me so much about the convoy wasn't that there was a whole bunch of people who, you know, didn't want to get vaccinated and chose not to get vaccinated. There's lots of people in every, every community, every, like, you probably know, you know, friends who chose not to get vaccinated. I mean, like, there's people who are hesitant for cultural reasons, yep. for religious reasons, for philosophical reasons, for, you know, they spent too much time, you know, Obsessing over 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 wrong websites, that, whatever, like that's that's what that's par for the course. The issue is, there are people out there who are trying to spread it and push it beyond just my choice is to not do right. it. So yeah, don't do it. Right? Yeah. It's more of a of a uh, an, an a deliberate attempt to destabilize. Uh, to fundraise, to right. make money off of people's fears, uh, to uh, to shift the narrative, to to undermine their trust in institutions, to like like to, to just sow chaos uh, in in our democracy and our society, and are using very very powerful tools to do that that social media and and the online world have developed in a way that actively and deliberately harms Canadians. Like, you will have heard the same stories I had of families, brokenhearted, yeah. sitting beside someone's bed saying, he didn't get vaccinated. We didn't know it was real. We thought the vaccine was worse yeah. than the virus. And now dad's dying and we can't do anything about it. Yeah. I wish he hadn't believed that website, yeah. right? It's, yeah, it's one, one, that, thing, yeah, one thing to say, I don't want to have it. It's another thing to say, and you all shouldn't have it either. Exactly. Yeah. And the kind of... Yeah. of, of preying on people's fears because people are f fearful and anxious. I mean, it's a pandemic. What does it mean? How do I protect? I, I don't trust the government. I don't trust institutions. It's, you know, uh, and, and people prey on that and amplify it and end up endangering people's lives. Yeah. And, and that's where my responsibility, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't go around looking for fights. No, I'm, 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 no, I'm someone who, who, who like loves this country, tries to bring it together. Yeah. But when there are people who are actively trying to do harm to their fellow Canadians, yeah. I, I, I sort of can't shrug it off. I and can't not, not 
speak up and say, hey, that's not what you should be doing. And you, the thing about it is, too... It, felt your language in that. Yeah, time yeah, yeah. <laughs> you haven't wavered. I mean, you know, there was a time where I thought, you know, I turned to my wife, Jess, and I said, I don't know how much longer he can do this. And then I turned the TV on, and there you are, charging in to do something else and grab another file, do another thing. Did you, did, have you ever wavered in the last two, three years? Have you ever thought, I, 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 I can't do this anymore? <laughs> the, the, the first time I had that thought was probably a week or two after getting elected the very first time, right? So, I mean, listen, you know, no matter, everybody you know, does, everybody every does, job, no matter yeah. what job you yeah, have, that's uh, true. there's, there's yeah. a tough moment. But yeah. the reality is the sense that I'm able to actually make a difference in the life of the country and yeah. help people. You still feel that, eh? Oh, yeah. You, you, you well, really, listen, you you really know, feel we just, that. We just announced dental care. I know, right? yeah. I mean, and, that, and that's, and like people are like, well, how does that help with inflation the kids, that people can finally send their kids to the dentist? Well, there's a lot of low-income families yep. that couldn't afford to send their kids to the dentist who, of course, still sent their kids to the dentist when they needed it, even though they couldn't really afford it and they had to cut back on yeah. all sorts of things. Well, this making sure that they can actually do it without taking away from groceries or rent money is is you know part of the country we're supposed to be yeah and yeah we just cut childcare fees in half right across the country that's hundreds even thousands of dollars yeah. a month for a whole bunch of families that are squeezed because times are tough for people right yeah. now and and the worst is next they know they know that next year is going to be tough too. I right? have to. I have to be reminded, and I tell I, people who ask me about you. I tell this story all the time. Um, I think it was maybe you had been in Parliament on the backbench for about a year, maybe maybe a year and a half, and we were having one of our legendary lunches outdoors on a patio. Yeah, and I said, yeah, and I said to you, you know, what what's the best thing about it? And you said, what surprises me is how much I can do for the people in my riding, and that always stuck with me. Because it, it took you a while to learn the hallway, not the hallways, because you've been there a while, um, but it turn, you said it tur took you a while to learn the ins and outs, but once, once you got that engine going, you were actually able to help people, and that's, that's what made the job satisfying yeah, for you. What you, what you that carries do. through into the PMO. As a constituency MP, yeah, helping out with immigration files, helping folks with their pensions, helping you know, deal with issues people are facing in, the ri in your yeah. riding... Um, is the basis of everything else. I'm like ultimately, you know, no matter what I do as a policy, whether it's dental or the low income rental support. Feel good uh, about that. But for me, I think of the folks in Papineau that yeah. I met, you know, as of God, fifteen years ago wow. now, uh, when I started, uh, and and got to know uh, the people and keeping those people in mind as I'm putting forward every policy we do. Um, is is the way to, to to not fall into sort of the academic policy abstractions that uh, uh, that politics is surrounded with. I'm surrounded constantly by really smart people who say, "Well, this is a solution, that is a solution," and the key to politics is being able to both connect that to people in their in their real lives and not just sort of on paper and understand that people aren't aren't just you know, statistics; they're real people, but also Think about how um, how to explain it to them, how right. to connect it to them. Like if you do something that's really good that nobody knows about it, um, not only do you not get credit for it in a political way, which you know is, is is important when you're running for elections, but more than that, people don't people not understanding that their institutions can help, that the government is able. Like, well, do everything or shouldn't do everything, but it can be there to support people in tough times and steer us right and be there. If people don't know that and feel that of their government, then you know, someone comes along and says, well, we'll burn it all down and start from, start from scratch. Uh, suddenly, okay, well, it's yeah. doing nothing for me now, so yeah, maybe, maybe a, a new iteration will do better. But when people feel like they did through the pandemic, when we were able to get those CERB checks out, Two weeks after someone received their last paycheck, people went, oh, okay, the government's got our back. Yeah. Our institutions work. So, yeah, we're going to listen to them. We're going to hunker down. We're going to, you know, we're going to you know, take care of our families. We're going to wear masks. We're going to keep our distances. We're going to do all these things. And 
because our institutions worked, um, we had not just a, a, a less bad pandemic than most of our peer countries uh, in terms of deaths, in terms of, but our economy bounced back faster because of it, right? Because people had confidence and they were able to say, okay, you know what? I'm not just going to walk away from my business. I'm going to turn off the lights, I'll pass the government supports on to my employees who will still stay on the books. And then when we were able to open up again, it was flick on the lights, not rebuild from scratch. Right. It was call people up, say, okay, you're coming in for a shift now. That, that response of being there for people was both the right thing to do and the smart thing to do to make sure we could get through. But overall, the confidence people have in their institutions is what the extreme divisiveness of populism is, is tending to uh, undermine. It's funny, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know what I was going to find, um, but you're just as energized, like I find <laughs> an energy coming off you that I didn't expect to find. Like you're still jonesing on the job. Mm -hmm. eh? You still, you still, you're, st I tell people you get a kick out of the gig and you do. You say it's, it's still, it, despite all of that, that has gone on, it's still there. You know, I, 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 someone at one point was sort of pointed out that, that, you know, we haven't, it hasn't been an easy stretch these past seven years. We started <laughs> with you know, Trump and then, and yeah. then we move into, into, into pandemic and then war and Europe and like, like all these yeah. big, big things, any one of which would be a big challenge and we get all of them. Um, but you, you do this job because you think you can make a difference in people's yeah. lives. And it really matters. You know, I, I love the behind-the-scenes stuff. So I, I want to talk about the Queen a little bit. How do you find out that the Queen has passed away? Mm -hmm. um, does it come in a phone call? Does somebody knock on your door and tell you the news? How did you feel when you got the news? And, and talk to me about some of your memories of uh, Her Majesty. It was uh, the morning of a cabinet retreat here in Vancouver. Um, and we were just, we were actually, um, doing, uh, the prep, uh, for the closing press conference that we were going to do with cabinet, uh, behind us. Uh, and, um, we're in, yeah, I'm just you know, talking through some of the issues of the day and, um, we get a knock on the door and, and, uh, I think it was the clerk, um, sort of comes in uh, and says, uh, I just, uh, we just, I just heard from our contact at the palace. Um, Her Majesty has just passed away. And everything stopped. Uh, I just said, okay. And I just sort of sat there and it was actually, um, I think it was Adam Scotty who knows me. Uh, who said, uh, um, okay, you should clear the room now. I'm like, oh, well, no, we have to. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. And, and I just asked, 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 and sort of people headed out. I said, nobody says a word about this. Um, and so I just had to take a few minutes um, because it, it, it really hit me hard. It was personal, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, well, it was all of us. Yeah, she was it, the, absolutely. She was the queen we knew, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and whether, it, like, she was part of a steadiness yeah. in our lives, and you didn't have to have the personal relationship that I had with her to to feel like, okay, this this is a, a moment. This is this is a a a time where um, you know the the. History, history unfolds with a capital H. Was she helpful to you on a personal level? Yeah. Um, I mean, I always thoroughly enjoyed our conversations mm -hmm. because she was, she kept pointing out that, oh, she never spent much time studying in schools and she had tutors and so she doesn't know a lot about the world. I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <Probably not. laughs> um, but, you know, she, she came at it with, with an openness yeah. and, and um, a self-professed, um, naivete is the wrong word, 
least a, a, a freshness to it to say, you know, you're the one who's you know, studied carefully and you de dealt with all this stuff. Tell me what you're thinking about this. Tell me what. And like, you get the sense that she was open and thoughtful and sort of you know, pulling things out the way she had with you know, dozens of yeah. prime ministers from Churchill yeah, yeah. on to whoever yeah. else, you yeah. know, uh, at the same, and, and what she was able to understand about the world that way was extraordinary. In, in your position, are you able to personally extend your sympathies to members of the family or is that all done through diplomatic no, no. channels? It was, it was personal when I, when I, uh, yeah. when I reached out. Um, tell me about, um, I want to talk a little bit, a friend of mine, a friend of ours actually, um, who's a very, very big fan of yours, um, we were talking to uh, Andrew and, and uh, he said, I'm curious if the Prime Minister cooks. <laughs> and I thought, I've never asked you that before. Do you cook? I can, <laughs> but I don't you often. Okay. Uh, and whenever I do, yeah. um, it drives Sophie crazy <laughs> because... <laughs> I'm slow. Okay. I'm meticulous. Okay. Uh, and and I, you know, it's just like, oh my god, it takes hours. Just throw in it. I'm like, no, I'm trying to do it right. Uh, I enjoy it. I I can. Um, do you have a go to? Do you have a favorite well, recipe? I, like I make uh, I make oh boy waffles. Uh, for, what are for oh the, boy waffles? They're just the classic waffle okay. recipe. Okay. I, I make them with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, with Didi uh, on uh, on Sunday mornings uh, yeah. uh, at uh, at the lake at the cottage. Um, I, I I don't cook as much yeah. as I as well, I used to. Have but much I have time to. Right? I enjoy it. I do. On, on the, uh, that's a lot of yeah. I I I look forward to having more time in my retirement <laughs> in a, yeah. about a decade to cook more. Yeah. Um. And uh, how do you spend or allocate time with the kids? Because um, when I first of all. What are you feeding that boy? <laughs> Holy smoke! What is happening with yeah. Zav? Like, is he Zav, taller than you yeah, now? Yeah, Zav just just got Jeez. taller than me this summer. So yeah. he's uh, he's uh, he's 15 years old, and he's now uh, you know past six two. Uh, and he was all excited about that. Wow. I'm like, yeah, he goes, yeah. Well, watch out. You're you're on. You're gonna stop. He goes, no, I don't want to get too stout. <laughs> he, well, he, he he sprained his ankle badly uh, in his very first football game ever. And uh, it was so bad that we, we needed to get an x-ray. Uh, and the, the, the doctor comes back. He says, I've got good news. Um, we're pretty sure it's not broken. It's just a bad sprain. Uh, although we could see uh, it's hard to tell uh, in the growth plates. There might be a, a little hairline fracture. Uh, I'm like, oh, my God, that's terrible news. He goes, well, no, no, it's, it's, it's going to be okay. No, 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 no. He still has growth plates. He's going to grow more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his, his feet are already size 12, right? I mean, he's, it's like, oh, no. Um, one of the things I've been trying to do uh, more deliberately is, um, is be there to help them with their homework. Yeah. Uh, and that, that is something that um, I don't get as much time as I'd like to, but... I like I've I've found for me it keeps me connected to what they're doing. Yeah. Uh and and you know it it you know they seem to appreciate it. Cuz it's not really a normal like Sophie doesn't phone you at three o'clock and say, "What do you want to have for dinner tonight?" And then you're home at five thirty. Like it doesn't work that way, right? It's well, it's, that sort of does. does it? What time really? are you getting home? Okay. Are you, are you going <laughs> to eat with us? Uh, you know, yeah. uh, Zab's got his basketball game, so uh, try and get home in time to, to see him before. Yeah. Uh, or uh, he's got a game next week. You really want to try and make time for? And uh, these, it's. It's a family now. Now it's you know they're they're getting to be teenagers, you know, yeah. fifteen and thirteen. So uh, they don't necessarily want to come up to the uh, up to the cottage uh, on the weekends. No, yeah. we want to stay in the city with our <laughs> friends. I'm like, oh god, I remember doing that to our dad yeah, yeah. when we were kids. Yeah. Um, and you, you know you negotiate it through, and uh, it's it's, it's uh, there's a lot did, of normal. Did you? Yeah. Is there a lot of normal? Yeah. Is there? Yeah. yeah. Really? Eh. It has to be. Yeah. It has to be. You can't. You can't. Are there curfews? 
<laughs> curfews and screen time that they keep finding apps to work around and and uh there's you know challenges around uh, the amount of time they waste on their phones and it's just like oh, i wish i hadn't given you a phone i got my well, how old were you when you got your phone for i was 28 because <laughs> yeah well that doesn't count <laughs> you know it's like oh god <laughs> do you uh did you surf when you were away in the summer uh a little bit a little bit yeah because I, I thought maybe that's why you chose to go where you went i thought you wanted to surf yeah it's just mostly finding you moments must, to get away with the yeah. family where we can actually just be uh is is really nice I think. did you have time to read this year yeah yeah i always anything stick out read. oh um stephen king's latest really fairy tale really it is it is i don't know he's 75 now and he's always my favorite author yeah uh but fairy tale comes back with a um it's got a level of energy that reminds me of him in really? his in his youth that his is early so dark cool. tower so i totally like massive christmas recommendation really um, okay and uh yeah i've read i've read a, a few things i'm into uh uh ian hamilton's uh eva uh eva lee uh, she's a forensic account, accountant ninja uh, action books that are yeah. that are that are just just nice things to chill. I just read uh, uh, Michelle Good's uh, Five uh, Five Little Indians, wow. which is I just it's just a beautiful novel that is gut wrenching. Uh, I spent basically the second half of the model uh, the novel just weeping, really just eh? weeping wow. the whole powerful. way. It's so powerful, wow. you know, and it's all about reconciliation and, and yep. uh, intergenerational trauma. But it's, you know, th like I, I have to, because you get ground into all sorts of briefing notes and facts and, and, and analyses and documents of yeah. this, that. You got to remember stories. And for me, the world unfolds in, 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 in stories. And in, in the stories we tell each other about who we are, who we want to be, and the story of what we are as a country. And if you're not staying connected to stories, you get lost. I was thinking of you my the last time I was on an airplane trying to pick a movie. And I thought to myself, I wonder if Jess can watch movies on his plane. <laughs> on the pla not your plane, but like I, you, I, I think of you when you're, I, you're I, going to Southeast Asia or yep. you're going to Austria. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Like oh, that's yeah. a lot of time on an aircraft. Mm -hmm. And as many briefs as you may have on your lap, yeah, which at I one point you must think, Okay, that's enough of that this, for now. This, this latest trip, yes, the, the, yeah, the four summits around yes, the world that, that we I, did. This is one of the things I was going to ask you about. Andor. Okay. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Dude, you okay. got to see it. Okay, it is okay. so good. Is it really? It eh? is so okay. good. It's put that it's on the list. Everything that Star Wars could be and really? should be. It's wow. thoughtful, it's gritty, it's okay. not filled with cameos by a digital Luke Skywalker. It's 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 just real. Okay, good. Uh, and it is so, so and it's for grown-ups. It's okay. it's like it is it is so and it's political and it's like oh no no no. Okay, I, uh, so you can you can yeah. you can put a brief down and put Andor on. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and yeah, you have you have indulgences. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I just finished season 3 of The Boys, uh, which yeah. is Oh my! Have you, you seen watch? the boys? No, I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, dude, that, you're not I'm, watching good shows. What well, are you watching? Uh, there would non-stop television, and especially okay, in the last so, four so months. What is it? Um, like, what, what's, what have what's, we been what's, watching? Uh, yeah. um, did you watch Stranger Things? Did you hang on yeah, Stranger Things? I, I, did you, I made you it fall off? Like, I fell off. I did fell you? off about the third season. Or did so. you really? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got you. I know we're getting the wave. Um, <laughs> I want to. I want to. Uh, one of the things I want to quickly ask you because Azel has uh, sent me something to show you. What's Terry up to these days? Um, is he enjoying he, retirement? He, he, is uh, he still retired. He's, he's semi. He's still going. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Semi. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, did when you first took office, and you have to stand on stage with all of these world leaders. I would imagine at first it's like. Hey, this is this is a powerful company I'm in. I'm guessing by now, you're just one of the crew, right? Um, sort of. Well, are you, or is it still intimidating? No, it's not. No, because these are all people, right? Yeah, yeah. And okay. and actually, it was it was funny in 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 one of the one of the summits in Asia. There was uh, one of the newer guys who's a buddy of mine. 
uh, or very friendly and, and allied with us uh, uh, from, a, from a, a, a global south country who was like, okay, wait, who's that? I'm like, uh, he's, he's this country and we like him. It's like, okay, good. Okay. Uh, and then who's that? He goes, no, no, you need to stay away from them. That's the Russian ambassador right? <laughs> or whatever. Like, like, so like people know that I sort of know the you know, right. lesson, but don't, don't let them get talk to you about trade and butter. Cause you don't want to deal with that. And this, like, I'm like, I, I, I know, I know people on, on, uh, yeah. And, so, and, that, and you can push, you can push things for Canadians in, in a way, cause so much of international relations are interpersonal relations and having, having those dynamics and that history makes a difference. So is that what, can you find the cartoon formula? Is that what, um, is that relationship what resulted in the Chinese leader standing next to you and saying, hey, I got a bone to pick with you. I, um, is, it, is, the, is, the, is it the familiarity get to that point? Um, well, see, I've known... I've interacted with Xi consistently yeah. for the past seven years, right? Yeah. Uh, and we've been through um, some challenging moments together. Like yeah. the Michaels uh, was, was a really tough time. But yeah. one of the things we did, I think it was in Osaka, as I pulled him aside, I said, look, I want to send you a good ambassador uh, so we can maybe you know, get things back on track. And he said, okay, that's a good idea. I said, I'm going to send you Dominic Barton. And he said, okay, get, put that, you know, send that in. And we fast-tracked that because of a, a, a direct conversation. And having direct conversations, like, I mean, the only thing that was really exceptional about that conversation yeah. was that it was on camera. They got right? caught on camera, yeah. Because yeah. everything else, these are conversations, the kinds of which yeah. you have and you have to have to, to you know, point out your issues and to say, okay, well, let's work on this, but we're going to stand on that and we're taking issue with this. And like that dynamic is what a lot of, of international relations yeah, are about. It's not easy conversations sometimes. Behi behind closed doors, it's not all diplomacy, is it? No, there's some very direct conversations. Yeah, yeah. There needs to be. Yeah. Um, uh, Moshe wanted me to send this because he drew this cartoon and I don't know if your people have shown it to you, but he drew this cartoon and the editor of the Gazette said, mm, no, but I, I thought you would like it cause I thought it was great. Cause I felt the same way after I saw you stand up for everybody. I thought I felt the same way. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> have you seen it? No, he hadn't man. seen it. He asked me to show it to you. <laughs> yeah, no, not quite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not quite that dynamic. I, we're, we're, I, I, we're not entirely diplomatic, but no, I'm not that undiplomatic. No, 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 no. Well, that's the typical Aislinn. You know, he, he got a kick out of it. What it, What's on your Christmas list? Music or like, buying? Like, yeah, stuff? yeah. Have you, um, <laughs> did you ask for anything for Christmas? Um, yeah, I have, I have <laughs> suits. Okay. And I have uh, jeans and T-shirts for the weekend. Okay. Um, the only nice shirt I have to go out to dinner with my wife or with friends. Yeah. I'm like I'm down to one okay. because like I she threw out all my old Le Chateau shirts <laughs> and and like, I, so I'm like I, I just I need <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's like they were shiny and clean yeah, yeah, they were all yeah. great, but they yeah. weren't weren't exactly. Um, so I I asked for 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 you know nice. I mean, it's like if like you reach that age where I really want some nice socks for yeah. Christmas. It's like, oh my god, we're not asking for a Lego spaceship anymore. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's what Christmas is all about. Um, and live shows. Uh, Jess and I were talking about tragically hip and mm. that memorable night in Kingston. Do you, you haven't you haven't had a chance to see much live uh, music lately, eh? Tonight, I just got an email from uh, if if I'd been back in Ottawa uh, uh, tonight, I was going to go see uh, Chantal and Rain uh, oh, at uh, at the National Art Centre yeah. with uh, Sophie and the kids. So uh, you, you do that when you can. Yeah, but, got um, you. All right, I know you have to be in Surrey. So <laughs> Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, my friend. Merry Christmas, brother. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you.